this tool, right, the Rockefeller method slash waterfall method is a great way to help educate, right, mm -hmm. generations, generations, and also keep the wealth from essentially dissembling, right? Yeah. As long as you have good trustees of the trust that are yep. doing their job and dispersing it exactly how you designed it to be, where you can only use the funds for business, for income producing activities, charities, passions, things like that, and not blowing it on stuff that is not significant, right? Based yep. off of the, the sinful nature of the world. Yep. If, if they can do so in a way where you've designed it, there is no way that this money can essentially ever leave. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Better Wealth Podcast. And here I have the co-host, as I am Dominator, the <laughs> host of the Better Wealth Podcast, Mr. <laughs> Kayla Bieber. No, uh, I'm just kidding. In, uh, in high school, supposedly, they called uh, this beautiful being uh, Justin Bieber. I had, the, I had the Bieber hair, and I thought for a moment it was a great time to get attention. And then I slowly or fastly separated myself from from that trend well to, so. to be honest with you i actually don't see it um so when people say that it kind of blows my mind justin bieber is actually a little cooler but no, <laughs> I, just, I don't have as many I'm, tattoos I'm as, just, as I'm justin just, i'm just joking man um anyways with that being said uh we're so glad that you're listening to the better wealth podcast and we have a treat for you today as we're going to be talking about legacy the rockefeller method slash the waterfall method and uh, i have conversations with people all the time that come to me and say dom I want the end asset. All mm -hmm. I care about is cash value. I don't care about the death benefit. Yep. Right. And the death benefit is not important to me because, right, you want to minimize the death benefit and you want to maximize cash. So the whole thought is like, I don't want the death benefit. But when you sit down and explain to them the power of the Rockefeller yeah. method and how you can build a legacy and leave a lasting legacy that'll last forever, yep. like it can start with you, right? Yep. You may have been born poor, right? but it doesn't mean you have to die poor yep. and you can start something from scratch that can literally leave a legacy for generations and generations and generations and it can start with you. And this method that we're about to share with you is exactly how you can do so. Yeah, so, yep. I love it. Well, here's, here's what I want to do. I want to talk about it high level. And then I actually, we're, we're going to draw this out. And so for, for those of you listening, thank you for listening. And we're going to do our best to talk, talk this out. But if you're watching on YouTube, I think you're really going to appreciate just the, so what, when we talk about the Rockefeller method, the concept of having life insurance on three generations, and if done properly, each generation will become wealthier. Um, and it's that, that, that resonates with the cert, certain people. Like, and, and, and I love the people that it resonates for because it's like at the end of the day, life insurance is not an investment. Life insurance is not this get rich quick deal. Life insurance is a tool and it's an incredible tool. And we talk a lot, like a lot about the living benefits of life insurance. And the Rockefeller method can be used um, and you can tap into the living benefits. So it's, that's great. But it just, it just, I think, becomes way more uh, relevant when you talk about multiple generations. And so, Dom, if I was to ask you, okay, talk to me high level about why three generations, how that works. And when we talk about the Rockefeller method or the Waterfellow method, how would you explain it if someone was to call in? Yeah, that's a great question. And I always like to explain that it's keeping the wealth within the household, but allowing you to essentially still be living, but allowing generational wealth to be built. So a lot of the times the life insurance policies get put in trust and mm -hmm. the trust is essentially saying, hey, if I was alive today, this is how I want the money to operate, even though I'm no longer here. Right. And it's a very, very powerful tool because a lot of people don't know that like, that's how trust operate and work. It's I put money in it when I'm dead and I'm gone, it still operates and maneuvers how exactly how I want it to maneuver. Yeah. And so ultimately, every time somebody's born, somebody gets a life insurance policy. That's right. Right. And then every time somebody dies, that life insurance money essentially gets put back into the trust and then the, the cycle continues. And then while people are alive, they're able to use those funds to asset based activities for businesses, for real estate, for whatever that happens. And therefore, it can never, the money can never run out because it's always getting regenerated and, re, and refilled back into the trust. Right, right. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to assume right now that I do have a family um, because it would make it simple. So you have, let's just say my, my dad is here and then there's me, Caleb. And then let's say I have a, you know, a 
kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So baby Williams. Yeah, baby Williams, which would be a scary thought, you know? And and so let's let's say that my dad has a policy and this policy has cash value in it. So he's get all the living benefits of of having having the policy, but he also has a death benefit. So let's just say for this example, he has seven hundred K and it's growing of of cash value. And let's say he contributes, you know, he contributes some money to it as well. But the death benefit is one point five. This is again um, hypothetical numbers. Okay. So uh, again, just to re reiterate that he, my dad could utilize his cash value and, uh, any outstanding loan would get, uh, subtracted from the net death benefit that he would experience it, when he passes. Um, but at the end of the day, he gets the benefit of the, you know, the tax, you know, the tax benefits and all the amazing benefits of cash, but he also has a death benefit. And let's say I have a policy as well. And this policy is, let's say there's, you know, seventy thousand dollars of cash in here, and um, I, I also pay premiums. And let's say when my kid is born, I think you can get a policy after ten days being born. We do a little policy on Johnny over here, and so the idea is, and each one of these has death benefits. Now it's funny, a little premium on a kid could get you like a million bucks. And let's say I have um, this is probably a bad example because we have a lot more death benefit than this. Let's say I have three million. Okay, this is just an example, right? But the idea is, okay, we all are starting to have control of capital. If I wanted extra money, I could go and make an agreement with my dad and he could maybe give me a hard money loan or whatever. And so we're, we, the first thing that I wanna point out is the control that each generation has. It's like if, if Johnny um, you know, wants to go get a car or other things, a lot of people say, instead of going to the bank, you could go to your family and your family could work out a deal and keep money within the family. That's very attractive to some people. Um, and so number one, you get the benefit of controlling capital. And I have, and we have a ton of videos on the importance of controlling capital as it relates to that. Um, but, but what ends up happening is when, when my dad passes away, when my dad passes away, this death benefit's gotta flow somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the idea is for this money to then flow to the next generation. You see why this is called the waterfall method or the Rockefeller method, because each generation will get a death benefit. And regardless if my dad would, let's say my dad was a disaster when it comes to his wealth, and he just did horrible things. This, this death benefit would ultimately redeem his mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so if we're dealing with a trust, then, then obviously the trust funds it and then the trust could end up buying more life insurance on other people. So it's like, it, whether it's a trust or whether it's just individual, I think it's sometimes it's easier to think about on an individual basis. Now the ninja trick is, here's, here's the ninja trick, is let's say I, am, I have some outstanding loans. Let's, let's just say I've, I've you know, taken a loan and, and funding a business and I'm, I'm paying myself back, or it's not myself, I'm paying the, the insurance company back um, but I have a thirty, forty thousand dollar outstanding loan. Well, where's this money going to go? I could either start new life insurance or I could pay back loans. So this new money, I could, I could just put it in the bank, okay? Or I could repay back a loan, or I could start start a new policy. And again, what I love about this is this death benefit is going to get credited because it's not only going to help in, in this example, me, but it's ultimately going to have impacts on my kids and their future kids. Mm -hmm. And, and you see this where it's like, you know, you see this in families where they're just each generation is getting life insurance and they're getting all the benefits of controlling capital. But at the end of the day, the death benefits going and, and they're, and, people are able to build places to store capital within their life insurance by maybe having outstanding loans. There may be starting new life insurance policies. There might just take that cash and reinvest it in investments. But the point is um, we have to think multiple generations. I think uh, one, of, one of Jeremy's favorite quotes is um, the, a wise man plants a tree in shade that they will never sit in. I love that. And, and it's one of those things that this fires me up because I personally have um, almost $10 million of death benefit. April, which um, at the time that this is probably being released, she's, she's my fiance, soon to be wife. She has $5 million of cash value or death benefit. And I share that with you because it's like, we don't have any debt and we don't have any kids at this point. And this, we have now, right now, a $15 million impact on nonprofits, charities, the future Williams family 
trust. And you better believe when we have kids, we're going to start um, teaching them to be good stewards of wealth. And they're going to get all the benefits of controlling money. Trust me, this is not just a death benefit play. But the reason I'm such a huge fan of life insurance is it is it all it automatically gives you that amazing way to pass on money and it's effective. And especially when you use trust and foundations, it can even um, elevate this even more and, and you'll be able to per potentially have a lot more control. Uh, they say control from the grave. So I don't know if that confused people more, but I just want people to understand like if each generation gets life insurance and you teach people well, you, one of my kids could be a disaster, but if they kept the life insurance, when they passed away, that death benefit is going to get passed on. And that's why people love trust is there. You can, you can create a lot more. Um, you, you can make your demands permanent from the grave, which is a whole nother episode. But what, what do you want to add to that? I, I know I did a lot of talking and I hope that, hope that inspired some things and in, in people that are watching or listening about, about uh, the Rockefeller or slash waterfall method. Yeah. And, um, in, in the book, there's a book, the, the Rockefeller Method. He, they use two examples. They use the Rockefellers and they use the Vanderbilts. Yep. And one, obviously, is still today, is, is worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. The other one, you don't hear about anything, yep. right? All you hear is like the university. And that's essentially yep. it. But they obviously um, did not become good stewards of their money, right? They spent it, but they weren't good stewards of it. So therefore, they have nothing left to show for. So... This tool, right, the Rockefeller method slash waterfall method is a great way to help educate, right, mm -hmm. generations and generations, and also keep the wealth from essentially dissembling, right? Yeah. As long as you have good trustees of the trust that are yep. doing their job and dispersing it exactly how you designed it to be, where you can only use the funds for business, for income producing activities, charities, passions, things like that, and not blowing it on stuff that is not significant, right? Based yep. off of the, the sinful nature of the world. Yep. If, if they can do so in a way where you've designed it, there is no way that this money can essentially ever leave. Because yep. even if they were to take a max loan, if they die, the death benefit just essentially pays for the loan. And then there's still funds to re to re go back into the trust, yep. start another policy and, you know, to do other things with. Yeah. So, and I, this, I want this next statement to be very universal is no matter what, um, who's in power, who's president, what what the policies are currently, look at the trends of where other countries are going and ask yourself, what are taxes going to be? Are there going to be more restrictions on passing down money? And all these things, and, and what, what, what ends up happening is the more bad things in the future that, that could happen, life insurance and proper estate planning is elevated. Because proper estate planning and, and the use of life insurance together can be some of the greatest ways to preserve wealth and pass wealth on to the next generation. And we just, we're just nerds because we want people to utilize their life insurance policy while they're alive and thrive. Whereas majority of people that do estate planning agree, but they're like, I don't get this whole use your money while you're alive kind of deal. So anyways, um, thank you so much for listening, watching on YouTube. Um, we are really excited because we have this thing called the And Asset Vault. Do you want to you say anything about the And Asset Vault? Yeah, for sure. But first of all, um, you're a nerd, not me. Not, <laughs> we are. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm a very, very big These nerd. are for nerds or people that want to be more <laughs> just, effective I'm in their kidding. life, no, you know? I'm a high, high nerd. My favorite, my favorite board game is chess. I love Rubik's Cube. I love doing tapings. I'm a nerd. Uh, and life insurance, for me to be an and asset specialist, is nerdy in itself. But uh, the and asset vault is essentially anything and everything and asset related. There's going to be calculators. There's going to be illustration examples. There's going to be case studies, Q and A, FAQ. There's going to be so much information where you can go get plugged in. You can scroll through the entire vault. Yeah. You can learn all the information in regards to what you know is involved with the end asset, how you can use it, ways that it can be used, design, et cetera. And I think it's just going to be an extremely powerful way for you to get educated um, and to learn about you know the end asset and how we specifically use it um, with the people that we serve. Yeah, it, we're making it very, very selfishly because we know that if we can share all this information, I mean, when we talk about case studies, we have case studies about real estate, retirement, entrepreneurship. We have CD alternatives. Like we went, we went to town on just case studies examples. We have a, we have like I, I want to say hundreds, but close to hundred uh, plus frequently asked questions. We, we have a calculator that we have to be careful with, but it gives you the general idea. I know that you, we, we even put together like an illustration. I wanted to call it war room, but it's like an illustration cheat sheets where you'll be able to see some examples. We have a whole and asset playlist that, that is not on YouTube. 
um, that is for the vault. And so we, we're doing that because we know that it, when, when people see this, they may find ways that they can apply the and asset to their life. And so we're making it totally free because we want every single person that has the ability to go learn more and, and have the ability to talk to an and asset specialist who can help them have more clarity as it relates to how the and asset plays a role in their life. And so with that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. And um, we'll, we're going to have more videos coming. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.